It looks exactly the same. It's crazy. Mm. Want to kick us off with yours, mate? Yeah, I've gone for a um, a prop, uh, a, f- a fellow Englishman, so to speak. He's a lot more English than me, obviously, but uh, one of the all-time greats, in my opinion. Uh, I feel like he changed the way front rowers play when he landed. Um, legend at St Helens. Um, he actually beat me in the grand final his last ever year, so which is extremely disappointing for myself. But to see a guy like him actually go out a winner, you got to sit back and be appreciative of the career he had is um, James Graham. Mm. Like he, when he come, he started that chain passing with Aidan Tolman and Sam Cassiano and people like that, which would open up space for Josh Reynolds and Trent Hodgkinson to give the ball to Josh Morris and, and Benny Barber and people like that. Um, when you talk about uncompromising leaders that never took a backward step, um, I had the privilege of playing with Jammer for Great Britain. He was the captain of our side and to actually watch the way he prepared, to watch how passionate he was behind closed doors, the way he led, the way he didn't have any respect for his body and wasn't intimidate, intimidated by anyone, but also had the sleight of hand of, of a halfback. One of the all-time careers, doesn't get spoken about enough and um, got nothing but good words to say about him as a man, but certainly as a player, it was just incredible the way he come over from England and just transformed the way props played, had, had the balance between both. It's crazy. When he came to Australia, and I don't think we probably appreciate this enough in the NRL, he played 200 games in England before he got here. Yeah. He played 180 in the NRL. Yeah, I can't remember. How many grand finals has he played in? Because... I don't have that in front I think of he, I think he's played, like, in both countries, I think he's played in something like eight. Mm. And I I don't know if he'd won before. Yeah, he won his first and his last. Yeah, there you go. So, like, he was one from seven, I'm guessing, or something like that. And then... He won against uh, the St. Helens beat Wigan in, in that grand final in 2020, the COVID year. And um, he gets a bit embarrassed by the way he celebrated at the end. But you, when you look back at it as an opposing player that lost the grand final, if there's anyone that was going to beat you and deserved it, it's someone like James Graham that left no stone unturned and got every little bit out of his body that he could give. So he's um, someone that not only young props should look up to, young people that want to make it in the NRL or even Super League or any in anything – to know that you don't have to be the biggest, you don't have to look like a bodybuilder, you don't have to be the strongest or fastest, but you have to be the most resilient, tough, and work your backside off. And, and James Graham typifies that to, to the nth degree. Oh, I've never realised that he won a um, Man of Steel award yeah, that, four years before he came out here. Yeah, and that's how good he is. Like, do you think about uh, when Jason Tamalolo won the Dally M how good of a season that had to be when mm. you consider that halves touch the ball the most. They, they have the fancy plays, the fullbacks and people like that. For a prop to to win a well, a Man of Steel, which is the Dally M equivalent in England, it's just a feat in itself. And it just goes to show what an integral part he's been of every team he's ever played in. 53 test matches. Yeah, he just gave his... You get a, you get a special cap for when you play... 50 tests for England and there's not been, not been too many people that have done that and he actually I just saw a video mm. not long ago on Instagram he actually gave it back to his junior club and had tears in his eyes because he's so appreciative of where he started where he's from and the people that helped him get to where he is today so it just shows what a what a good man he is let alone player um, I know I've wrapped him a million here but actually getting to play with him and, and watch how much not only he cares about his club side, but how much he cares about his country is something that like is, will stay with me for the rest of my life. And um, the amount of trust that every player has in him that I've ever spoken to that's played alongside him, they cannot speak highly enough of him and can drink a pint. Hmm. If you ever need to learn how to drink a pint of beer, Jam is your man. No doubt. Wasn't it, wasn't it fascinating, going back to the doggies, how they played in 14, 20, 12 and 14, like how they had people like Graham, Tolman, Cassiano, Greg Eastwood, oh, yeah. who, would, who would all be out, like all middles who could play with the ball. And then you got, like, if you're a defender, you've got, it goes middle, middle, half, edge, who can all do something with the ball. Like, that must have been crazy hard to defend. Well, we, we call it string plays, or well, a lot of clubs call it where, like, a middle will tip to a middle, will tip to another middle, or a middle will tip to a middle, and the third middle will lead for your half at the back, then your back row will lead for your full back. Every, every club obviously runs it, but um, have different plays for it. Like, the Roosters run it really well with Radley, where, uh, they'll line up with the three middles. They'll hit Crichton or Tupanua for a quick play of the ball. They'll go face ball across, let's say, Jared for uh, Takiaho to lead for Kiri. Then you have the other back row, depending on who laid the line, lead for Tedesco. And that's when you see Tedesco just run into open space and ISO three on twos. But James Graham as a prop had that real neat knack of having Ben Barber off his hip where he could 
play actually back on the inside or he'd play shorter and he had that show and go too. And for someone that isn't overly fast or big, he had to use all the deception in the world. And, and as I said, like he changed the way that front rowers play. And you see a lot of props now that actually wave the ball around and use it to get one-on-one -on -one tackles and, and now getting those offloads. And I put a lot of that down to James Graham, who was, you know, to a lot of people was unknown when he was playing at St. Helens, winning comps and winning men of steals to come over here to be one of the greatest imports of all times. Um, He's unreal story and he's doing well now in the podcast space and stuff too. So Yeah. I was just about to say uh, the buy round with James Graham. Make sure you go and check out his podcast, doing tremendous things there. there there's so sorry, there's so many good ones. I listened to the Todd Greenberg one the other day. Do yourself a favor and listen to that. It is so fascinating. Yeah, you know, my favorite thing, uh, one of my favorite things that I've ever seen on James Graham's on Fox, uh, where he sits down with Matty Johns and he and he talks about um the grand final kickoff with Sam when they when they mm. had the head clash, the way he did, I won't ruin it, and I don't want to do him an injustice by the, how passionately he speaks about it. But I, um, when we went on preseason camp, I actually got about ten of the the young lads to my room, and I actually made them sit down and and watch it. Not not only because it was Sam and James Graham, two of the best props in the comp, but the way he, he spoke emotionally about how much it meant to him to to go out there and set the tone for his team. And I don't know if they left with anything. Uh, from it but every time I watch it I get something out of it and every time he speaks I'm, I listen because I know that he just talks sense and um, I think he found another club I don't know if he went back to the Bulldogs or something like that I read that he's found another club because obviously uh, St George let him go but he needs to be involved in the NRL in some capacity because his mind and the way he speaks is just so so good yeah I'm pretty sure I read this morning he's going back to Canterbury isn't he have you seen anything I haven't seen that but that is that's a no brainer for me yeah I'm pretty Massive. sure he is was it just on that grand final wasn't it like it's like those two were just magnets yeah. they were only ever going to find each other yeah. off that kickoff unbelievable moment I think the other one that stands out for me was when you used to have those Good Friday clashes. Oh, the best! Mm. Yeah. They, it was the when Adam Reynolds got mm -hmm. charged down. Yeah, yeah. And he was <laughs> he had it behind his back, and it was just you, you just, like I, I'm the first one to say get out of ref's face and whatever. You could just tell how his his determination just to win. Yeah, was unmatched. The the one thing that I'd encourage people to watch and um, people that don't watch the game as intently is probably what me, you, or or Maddie watch it is. Whenever a winger or a fullback or someone with electric speed would make a break and no one could catch him, James Graham would always chase until they put the ball down just in case. And he didn't do that to get a pat on the back. He did that because if something went wrong, like they dropped it or they tried to run it around for an easy conversion, he would bust his ass to get there to make it harder for the kicker to, like, to kick the goal or harder for the guy to score a try. Always in the picture. Like if someone made a break, I used to – get a thrill out of watching James Graham bust his ass to get back and, and make it hard. And that's a, that's a good thing for any young kid to watch because I've seen um, in Holden Cup, Josh Starling run down someone from the Warriors as they, they were showboating and went to put the ball down mm. and he chased back and knocked it out of their hands. So you never know what's going to happen and um, you don't have to be the biggest or fastest, but you have to have a whole lot of heart to play in the NRL and he's the man. He, he exemplifies that for sure. Shout out to Josh Starling, by the way. I know that he, he watches. Champion fell. Yeah, he's a good fella. Good, good from the gong as well. Of course he is. <laughs> um, now, I was just going to say too on James Graham, like you, have, like you look through the history of rugby league and you sort of say, oh, you know, this player was so good. I wish he could have played Origin because he was that good. Yeah. I look at James Graham. I just go, he was he was tailor made for Origin. Yeah, and he would have played for the Blues, obviously playing for the Bulldogs in Sydney. It would have been, obviously, you would lose your sort of like roots of state of origin and what it means but it wouldn't have been it would have been great to see people like James Graham and Sam Burgess and people like that that are obviously very proud Englishmen but you know if they would have put on a blue or maroon jersey they would have represented it like they were from there and both their games were tailor-made to play origin that bash barge relentless uh pursuit to win so um he's one of my all-time favorite players especially as a prop the way he played was was phenomenal so I'm gonna ask you a question that's sort of like asking you to pick your favorite child Best English import, guy like him, Burgess, Ellery, there's been yeah, you know, well, Gareth Ellis is another one, some champions. It's very hard to, to pick one. Um, Ellery, Ellery's hard to go past. Mm. Uh, what he did for the Tigers or Balmain was was unbelievable. Gareth Ellis won player of the year for the for the Tigers three years in a row, I think, and had a beautiful combination with Benji. Like slide of hand from Benji and, and Gareth Ellis's lines that would he was built like a like a tank, like he was so hard to handle. And then you got the, probably the last two were the most famous that have come out. But like the, people forget about Gareth Widdop. Mm. Like what Gaz did, 
coming over at a young age, playing for Melbourne, partnering Cooper Cronk to a grand final, then ultimately going to the Dragons, leaving his comfort zone to captain them. Um, scored a bucket load of points every year, skillful, smart. Again, wasn't the quickest, but Gaz, I got to play with him for Great Britain. We weren't as success, successful as we liked, but I learned a lot of – he was very good at, like, letting it go. Like, he'd, he'd go to train and train really well, but been able to park it for, for tomorrow or park it for video, whereas I was very so much like, oh, what about this, what about this? And he just helped me sort of just relax and, and just focus on the next thing. So um, if I had to pick one um, just purely on favourite to watch would probably be Sam. Um, what he did for the Rabbitohs and the way he played and the courage he played with and every single week you know he was going to smash someone or he was going to get smashed for the better good of his team um, it's hard to argue but um, Ellery and, and Gareth and, and Jammer and all those boys it's hard to it's hard to pick one It was unreal that you had obviously Sam Burgess and James Graham playing at the same time South Sydney and Canterbury two arch rivals I always think to myself, how good would it have been if we could have taken a prime Adrian Morley, oh, chucked him in Miles, the Roosters yeah. at the same time, and then you would have had, like, the Roosters hate Canterbury, Canterbury hate the Roosters, Roosters hate, they all hate each other, and if you could have had these three alphas, these pommy alphas playing for each team, going at each other, it would have been fucking unbelievable. I think those three played together for Great Britain, um, maybe in Sam's first couple of tests. Sam played real early on, and I know that... Um, he obviously played with Jammer a hell of a lot of times and those two were lethal together with blokes like Jamie Peacock and stuff like that. But I'm sure that I'm sure that they all played together at one point. Moz was obviously at the back end. But you, could you imagine if you if you didn't know who those three were and they were just playing in the Super League and, and you were playing against them and you come up against those three? Let me let me read you out uh, Great Britain's Ford Pack in Sam Burgess' first game. Yeah, go on. Front rows were Adrian Morley and Sam Burgess. Your back row is Jamie Peacock, Gareth Ellis, Sean O'Loughlin. And then James Graham's on the bench somewhere. Wow. England's – this is one thing I'll, I, I like. I feel like I need to say. When you go over and play in the Super League, the depth of talent is obviously nowhere near the NRL. And that's not a disrespect to Super League. I love it more than, than anyone for what it did to me. Like, I'll defend Super League to the cows come home. The depth isn't as good. What I will say is, no matter what team you play in, the English front rowers are tough as fuck, mate. It's scary how tough some of them are. They don't care who you are. They don't care what you've done. They play to just go like that for 80 minutes and that forward pack, I'd argue, would be as good as any forward pack on its day and most feared. Most like that feared. pack, if they're all at their fearsome best, <laughs> who was the hooker? James Roby? Um, Terry Kef Terry Newton. Oh, a rest in love to Terry Newton, passed away not, not so long ago. He, he was a hooker for Wigan and he was just tough as nails as well. So, I mean... From hooker to, to back row to lock to prop to interchange, that pack is a joke how tough it was. And, um, yeah, English forward packs, mate. You can see how well they're going at the World Cup now. Tom Burgess leading the charge and, and leading the boys. And oh, How good was Tommy Burgess on the weekend? Oh, he has been – I feel like he's been the standout prop of the World Cup. I don't know about you guys, but it, it doesn't matter who he's played because you can only play what's in front of you. I feel like every week he's been up there for man of the match for England. I sort of feel like him as well. Uh, Matt, you can talk more about it. But like for South Sydney over the last year, he's been tremendous every time mm. he's played. But every time he hasn't played, Totola's really stepped up and yeah. it probably hasn't left the gap that it should have because Tom Burgess was incredible this season. Tom, yeah, Tom was Tom was so good. He's been good the last couple of years. Like it's it's kind of interesting how he, he kind of kicked on a little bit later. Mm. But I think when – because George obviously – was just so unbelievable from like 2014 to a bit. And then I think they kind of got looped in with each other. Like George's best and George's worst was a lot higher and lower than Tom's best and worst. And then, but Tom's worst was getting looped in with George's worst a bit. I, I feel Tom wasn't like, he didn't have, like everyone's like, oh, Tom Burgess had so many errors at the start of his career. I don't think he actually did. I just think he was kind of just in George Burgess' shadow for a bit. And now in the last few years, He's emerged. Yeah, try to tackle him though. Yeah, yeah, he might drop it once every now and then, but try to fucking tackle him. It's mm. almost impossible. And speaking of George, like obviously uh, he struggled with his hip. He had one of the worst hip injuries you yeah, could have. And first, first rugby league player to come back from literally like a hip replacement. So like it's a testament to him. But what about his try in that in that grand final? Oh. Was it from 30 out? And he looked like a 100-meter runner. Like it was unbelievable strength, power, athleticism. 
And I was lucky enough to play with George. Obviously, he wasn't at his best due to a degenerative hip. But mm. um, to say I've played, I've played with all the Burgess boys besides Sam. He um, his shoulder got so bad he couldn't play on the Great Britain tour. Ended up retiring. Um, I would have loved that moment, but. There's been so many good English players that have come out, and I know we're getting off topic, but Herbie Farmworth, if he keeps his, his track going, he could be one of the best English, Englishmen to come out and, and do what he's doing as well. He's been outstanding not only for the Broncos, but for England in this World Cup as well. Just on George, he did that a few times that year. Like, we just grabbed the ball and just run through. Did it on Good Friday, did it in round one, did in the grand... I'll read you his grand final stats. Again, I know we're off topic, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, a try, 213 metres, a line break and 29 tackles with only one missed. And That's he went off with a HIA at one point. <laughs> That's outstanding. Like he could have got the Clive if Sam didn't do what Sam did. Crazy. I can confirm too, about two days later, I was up at uh, Randwick Shops getting myself a coffee. And I heard this noise back of the cafe and I thought, what the fuck is that? I turned around, there's the corpse of George Burgess. <laughs> <laughs> I just let him have a little nap. And then the bus pulled up for your, what, your, your lap around the city or whatever. Yeah. And Sam pops out, he goes, George! And he goes, oh, fuck, and he off. And I was just in the yard, okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say George Burgess. Uh, James Graham, cracking shout there. Who's yeah. your next one? I've gone um, someone that made the game look so easy. And like we spoke about last time I was on pure form of footy. I've gone with uh, Fleddy Mateo. 